Well, that guy's peeing right now. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Well, we have been in an RV park for many weeks, way too many weeks. Way too long. But we're officially done with our electrical system. I just got the solar hooked up. We're now headed to Joshua Tree to test all this stuff out, see what's going on, and to do a little boondocking, a little trail running, a little e-biking, and I don't even know what else. Looks like most of the rigs are on the left side of this paved road here, which I don't know if it turns to gravel or not. I heard it can be a little sandy out here, so you gotta watch out for soft spots. And uh, it doesn't look super private, but uh, it doesn't matter. Like that's the whole great thing about having your RV and boondocking out in the middle, wherever, like your home, wherever you are. Yeah, wherever you want it to be. And luckily for us we did just come from an extended stay in an rv resort so this even though there's a lot of people out here it's still a breath of fresh air compared to the park status yeah pay entrance fee ahead so we are really close to the entrance to joshua tree which is cool yeah you can see on the map here that orange zone oh that's joshua tree right oh yeah yeah that's the park it's like right on it yeah. Well, we're getting in at a reasonable hour. Yes. I think it's like before one o'clock in the afternoon. Oh, one ten. Yeah, just after one now. We didn't have any three eighteen departure fiascos today, so that's always a plus. Yeah. <laughs> Leaving on time. Get some good mountain views out here. It's definitely uh, winter desert weather, like pretty chilly. We're gonna be um, feeling the cold overnight, but we're ready for that. We actually did pick up an extra blanket for the winter time. I, heard, I think I heard to the right, it was a little bit more sandy. Oh, yeah, there's a lot of uh, tent campers and car campers on that side. And over on this left side, there's all sorts of rigs. We've got schoolies, class C's, class B's, trailers. These guys look like they've been here for a little bit, set up, ready to rock. Yeah, they're sprawled out. We're attempting to pull into this spot and see how it feels. Hmm, it's so weird when you've never like been to a place, you're just kind of like, well, where do we want to go? Yeah, is this where we want to be or is it not where we want to be? First things first, I need my jacket on. Freezing, freezing. Yeah, looks like Aaron got the wheel tracks in. What? Oh, our new bike cover. Yeah. I haven't even seen that yet. Yeah, that looks good. Yeah, it's still on the small side, but... I see it's barely crammed in there, but the other one won't even work at all. Our big chopping block. We transport in the truck now and it traveled really well. So that's great. Um, we also stocked up on a bunch of supplies because there's not many good places to shop over in the desert. So we got tons of wine, we got tons of bubbly water, we got tons of food. Um, things that sometimes we have a hard time getting decent quality or good prices over in Quartzsite and Lake Havasu. 3.30, the sun is starting to set outside. But this is why we love boondocking. Just, you know, there's neighbors all around, but there's still just a beautiful view out the windows. 
and uh, we love it. There's people out there. Super windy out here today. We are starving and it is way too windy to try to even use a Blackstone. And honestly, I don't think neither one of us are up for that. We are pushing the easy button, of course, with our air fryer. And now that we have our solar panels up, I can use my air fryer daily. I intend to. So it's 1800 watts. And I cook these, I'm doing chicken thighs. I'm gonna throw these in 400 degrees. Usually it's about 12 minutes for the size of the thighs that we get. And once it goes for about five minutes, then I'm gonna throw in some green beans. These might shrink down a little bit. I'm gonna put in as many beans as I can fit. I might need to do a second batch, but honestly, I think that whatever doesn't fit in here, I'll just eat raw beans or whatever. I'm so hungry, like I could eat a shoe right now. So we're gonna throw these in. And this is all, This why I like this is because it's easy, it's fast, it's fresh, it's whole foods. And it uses some power, yeah, but it's so much better than, you know, popping something in the microwave. I'd much rather pop something in the air fryer than the microwave. Not that I'm like anti-microwave, but this just tastes better to me. So we're going to get this rolling. And in 12 minutes, we're going to be eating and we're going to be relaxing, putting our feet up and, you know, settling in. On travel day, it's stressful. You have things that you don't plan on. You're hungry, you're hangry, and you just want a quick meal. So 12 minutes doesn't get any better than that. Okay, it uh, just cycled off. I just wanted to catch that on camera to show that this thing actually cycles on and off. Like, what'd you say, a microwave? Yeah, microwave cycle on and off. Also, air fryers, like once an air fryer pressurizes, then it instant like- Instant pot. Yeah, instant pot. Brain fried. Okay, so I'm gonna pause it. It's been running seven minutes. And so what I'm gonna do is flip the chicken, season the other side because when you're boondocking, you don't want to dirty dishes, so you're not going to pull out a plate. I mean, you could pull out a plate and season it like you normally would. And then look at all this space now that I have to throw the green beans. The chicken did shrink down a little bit, so keep that in mind that uh, you have a little bit more room to play with than what you think you do. And the green beans, it's not like we're making something that we want super, super crispy, so you can pile these in a little more than you would like french fries. And then what I like to do is I'm using this kick and chicken because it is really good on chicken. And this is these little spice mixes are something I started using in the tent where previously I would be like, oh, I don't like spice mixes, but now they're just good and they're easy. Why don't you like spice mixes? Well, sometimes there's more fillers in them or like, for example, this is onion, salt, garlic, spices, red pepper, orange peel, sugar, Red bell pepper, paprika extracts. Because you wouldn't put sugar in it. I wouldn't put sugar in it, but it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven ingredients down the list. When you're reading an ingredient list, it goes in order. So onion is the number one used spice in this mix. So usually if sugar is in the top three, you might want to not buy that. If sugar is buried lower, um, like it is in this one, then that's fine. So throwing that on, and then the spray I love. This is just avocado spray, avocado oil. And you wanna be mindful of your oil sprays because a lot of your cheap sprays will have additives to them. And those additives can really mess up your pans, like your non-stick surfaces. And also in here, so just squirt it. I think spraying it gets the chicken a little bit crispier. And then for the beans, I'm just gonna do some salt and pepper. Normally, Aaron and I would cook more beans than this, and honestly, we'd cook more chicken, but we're gonna probably just each split one of these. This is not quite a pound of chicken, it's 14 ounces. And the green beans, I think I could eat all those beans on my own right now. I'm so hungry. But we're gonna start with this and we can always throw in more if we want to. We have plenty of stuff to eat and it's gonna be really, really good. Um, but you can see how you could easily get a pound of thighs in here, no problem. Uh, Cause we almost do at this point, we're just a little bit shy. So that's it. I 
like that noise. My phone is buzzing at me because this is the Wi-Fi version. So if I hypothetically were outside, it would tell me my food is done, which how often will I use that? I don't know, but it's pretty cool if I needed to, it's there. It's nice to preheat or to monitor it. You can actually control, like I can have the setup ready to go and then start it out there if we're sitting or whatever. Yeah. Are you ready for Did this? Did you see that took uh, four, four percent to cook that? Hmm. Roughly. Is it worth it? Yes. <laughs> Look at that. Not bad. It smells so good. You know what? I don't know. I just like it because it's not soggy. It's crispy. It's hot. There's no mess anywhere in the kitchen. Of course, I'll have to clean the basket, but that's fine. Oh, remember somebody was asking how to clean the basket? It's really easy to clean. Um, the only thing that's really messy is cooking bacon. And we rarely do that. Um, we've had this for, we've had this for a few months now mm -hmm. and we've made bacon twice. So, and honestly, I think part of it's just because like, it's a lot easier to cook out here or in here than out in the Blackstone, but it's really easy to clean this. It's usually you can just wipe it out, but you do want to make sure you clean it daily. I try to clean it daily because you don't want oil residue gunking up in there. So before we left um, the park, it did have some oil residue building up already. And I used this little scrubber. It's super scrubby. It's like a version of an SOS pad, but not an SOS pad. But it's super scrubby like an SOS pad is. And it's washable. My friend Marky gave this to me. It's called a Skoy. I don't know where she bought it, but it's great. And you can throw in the washing machine. I put it in a little laundry bag so it doesn't rough up my clothes. And then it really did a good job of taking like the oil build off off of here. Oil build up off of here. And then, you know, I only had to do that once so far. People ask why we don't like the gas absorption RV fridge and that's one of the many reasons is that it's not very consistent in its temperatures and we get things like frozen eggs and we haven't really had anything else too major but the way that they work that's the cooling coil and then the cold air drops so you have to kind of pay attention to that it's coldest up here warmest down here so you kind of got to be careful with putting uh the right stuff in the right area yeah so like meats and stuff you want to keep at the top unless i'm trying to quick dethaw it then i put it at the bottom and same with lettuce i've had a lot of produce freeze in here along with the eggs so eggs and produce are the two things that freeze on me so i like to put like the lettuce at the bottom and stuff and condensation has been a killer for me in this fridge I've noticed that my greens, like my field greens and my spinach and arugula, things like that, green salad stuff, it spoils really quickly. Even when I do my Ziploc with paper towel, it still it spoils quicker than than what we had in both the Dometic CFX and even in our van fridge for some reason. This one just doesn't like lettuce as much. Yeah, so so far the compressor style fridges that we've had in the van and the truck work the best for us and they're the most efficient like even right now we don't we still are running this on gas because um, you know it's winter time and we're only getting three four hundred watts of solar which is only enough to run the fridge mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but we are gonna start making breakfast right now so I'm gonna make Aaron scrambled eggs and for me I'm gonna make my current favorite breakfast I seem to go through breakfast items like in a rotation I'll do something for a few weeks and then I'll switch it up and right now I'm doing toast it's Ezekiel bread which is flourless it's sprouted grains and what I like about this Ezekiel is it has a lot of protein in it for a plant source like um, five grams per slice so right away I'm getting 10 grams out of my bread and then I do avocado I toast this in the air fryer 
I do avocado on top and then I do some sprouts and then I do one runny egg on each. So I have two open-faced pieces of avocado egg toast and I really like it. And then yesterday we talked a little bit about the air fryer and cleaning it. So this is what it looks like after cooking chicken in it. And it's pretty typical of me to leave dinner overnight because it's so hot after you get done cooking. I like to let it cool and then I'll clean it the next morning before I do it that day, before I cook on it again. So I'm gonna wash this out and you could easily, you know, wipe out all this grease, wipe out some of the chunks with a paper towel. And then to really get it clean, you do need to use soap and water and wash it in your sink. Um, the only time I don't let it sit is if it's something pretty icky, like the rare occasion of bacon, or if we cook fish, that is something that I don't want sitting in it for a while. And I'll let that cool and then wash it right away. But otherwise I typically have to clean this in the morning and that starts my day. So this is pretty common where I like to get the chunks and the loose grease out. And uh, it's super non-stick too, so it kind of yeah, looks like it comes out easy. It does. It comes out really easily. You do still want to use uh, soap and water on this though to get that layer of oil off of it because if you just keep cooking and cooking and cooking, it's just going to bake that on. So get as much off as you can that way. And then just a little soap and water. And usually what I do for that is I'll stick this right in here and I'll clean the top basket and that way the soapy water collects in the lower basket and so then I use that same water to wash the lower basket so you're not wasting water washing each piece individually you're washing both of them with the same amount of water. Doesn't that look good? Now we get to dig in at our beautiful dinette with an amazing view of the mountains. My phone is beeping telling me that my toast is done. Well, we're headed into Joshua Trey today to do a little bit of a jog. We're a little behind schedule on our training for this 55K. We've been a little under the weather slightly for just a couple days, but we got to get back on the horse. Yeah, we're behind by like three days, guys, not by like three weeks. But three days to me feels like a We long feel cooped time. up. Yeah. So we're not, we're not used to being so stationary. So these are the running vests, you know, People used to say running is such an inexpensive, cheap sport to get to. All you need is an old pair of sneakers. But when we find out about this ultra running, like the vests are almost It all starts bucks. with a pair of trail shoes. Hiking poles, new shoes every six months. Yeah. Multiple kinds. Yeah, special socks, special gaiters. Socks and gaiters and all types of crazy stuff. It adds but, up. But these are going to help a ton. We've been hiking in backpacks and so these are like stretchy small fit solomon vests with nice soft water bladders and they basically hug your body so when you are running they don't bounce around like a regular backpack will why don't you throw one on okay du, 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 du. it's really heavy yeah with all that water in there yeah so we have four bottles of water in here 17 ounces each what's what's 17 times four Aaron? They're half liter bottles, so we have two, liters, two liters of water, which is a lot of water, but we're going on a 14 mile run, so that's why we're taking so much. Usually we'll just take the two bottles, so we'll take one liter of water. And it's good to train with whatever you're gonna be carrying on your big race, so that you can strengthen your shoulders and your neck. It really does take a lot of uh, upper body strength, which is why, what, Aaron? Uh, Strength training is important <laughs> even if you're running. It's really important to cross train and make sure that you're like strong enough to like support everything that you're carrying and use your poles. Like the whole body gets into it. Yeah. But this is it. Nice, small. Nice and tight. So we're headed off to Cottonwood Visitor Center and that's where the trailheads are going to be. And there's like four or five trailheads that pop out of the campground off of there. 
and we're either gonna pick a seven mile and do it twice or there's like a, a 13 and a half, 14 miler that we'll do instead. It's a cloudy, gloomy day out today. But this would be cool for the hike. Ready? Yeah. Parking lot's full, but we got a street spot. Yeah, well actually there was one front row spot right up front, but I'd rather not be right up front where people are coming and going all day. I always just think about kids piling out and door dinging and all that good stuff. It can happen. It totally can. Well, our chance of rain went from 50% to 100% because it was currently raining on our drive-in. And it's actually kind of miserable weather right now. I'm not excited to go. I'm not excited, but sometimes you just gotta suck it up. So this is where we are right here, and instead of taking this Las Palms Oasis Trail, we're gonna go on this longer one, the Canejo Well, which is 13 and a half miles. Might do a little Hiking. Hike, hike, walk, run combo. We're yeah. just gonna do whatever we feel like because we're just, we feel pretty much like troopers for being out here right now, don't we, Aaron? She's speaking for yourself. <laughs> almost two miles in and we've kind of found ourselves on this isolated trail away from everybody else and it really does feel like we're in another world right now this landscape is pretty special joshua tree has always been a special park to us it's like it's like armageddon that way and life is that way yeah the clouds are starting to break just a little bit and give us a little bit of sunshine but we still have this really heavy heavy hanging fog over all the mountains Interesting smells out here. we decided to not push our sicknesses too much and so we're just going to be hiking today and not doing too much running at all little spurts here and there but right. i'd rather go slow than be out of commission <laughs> yeah got to make it back to base camp but this landscape is just just great it's magical so this is the south side of the park i think the north side is the main entrance and has more of the notable features landscapes like the, and the joshua like the trees Gardens. and the joshua trees We're three miles in, and the landscape changed from the wash uh, to kind of more hard pack, I guess, through those yucca trees. And then now it's like back into a wash, and but we're getting close to these rocks, which is kind of cool, because these, the rock structures is, is kind of like the second thing Joshua Tree is known for, like skull rock, and um, I don't know what kind of boulder formations they are, but they're very, very, unique kids love to climb and play on them yeah so fun somebody's telling us to go back 
the other way. <laughs> Go the other way. Like the labyrinth is back here. Yes, but this. Look how cool that is. This just keeps getting cooler. Here. Yeah, this is like the type of just beautiful rocky tree background that's just so, so fun back here. It's what makes it special. Yep. So three miles down, many, many to go. Time to keep walking. We had to pop up on top of the, the little rocks that we were down below. And once we got up here, the clouds are just rolling low and the sun popped out. It's such a great view to see those clouds breaking. It is so... They're just rolling through. So amazing out here. And this is only like three miles from the campground there at Cottonwood. It just seems like nobody... The clouds are pink. Nobody hikes here. Is that pink? Uh, kind of pinkish. It's just... There's a few footprints, and this trail is on all trails, so it is established. Established, but there was no signage in the campground, which zero, was weird. Zero signage, not one sign. And the trail, when you're on it, like you feel like you're just walking your own route. It doesn't feel like a trail at all. <laughs> it does feel like you're just walking through the desert, which like you're just picking your way and you're going. Now, if we get to walk through these boulders for miles, that's just amazing too. Or I know this trail goes around the mountain there. That's uh, what I call it, White Eagle Mountain? I don't remember. Golden Eagle Mountain? I have no idea. I'm just going to call it Joshua Tree Mountain. Start making up names. Making up names on our made up trail. There you go. Now, I don't know if this is going to hurt or not, but I'm just going to pull them right out. Because look how far they can go through. It's the one like in this area that went through on me. Oh, that goes so deep. I have to document this. They're long. Oh, they're, I don't know how that's not like in your skin. It is in my skin. I think it's this one. Can you feel it? Nope. Your foot's numb with cactus poison. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Did you get them all? Yeah. That's it? That's it. That's not so bad. <laughs> Aaron saves the day. That's not so bad. 12 and a half miles later, we did it. It feels so good. My endorphins are pumping. We spent so many weeks on the street running on pavement that our toes needed to feel the trail. And yeah. It's amazing. It's, it's been a amazing. while. It's amazing. I feel like top of cloud nine right now. Let's go eat. Yeah. Because <laughs> we're starving. I am hungry. 